we need to be guided to be able to go back to love. Isn't it obvious? Yes. What else do we need? We need motivational tools. And we come here to learn. So what is the first motivational tool? It is the carrot. I like to call it like that because we run after the carrot and when we are able to grab one, we eat it, it makes us feel good and it motivates us to run after more carrots. But if there would be only carrots, would we be able to live the lack of love? No. <laughs> yes? So what else do we need? We need another motivational tool that this time it hurts. Yeah. Sometimes we are lazy, we stop running after the carrots, and so sometimes we need the stick. <laughs> so that we finally listen and learn. And so you see why it's important to listen. Because listening to ourselves is the first step to love yourself. No wonder I ask you to don't take notes. There might be other conditions, but for now they are asking me to talk about something else. So they want me to talk about that energy of life. What is that energy of life? So love is an electromagnetic energy. It is the union of two energies. The masculine energy, which is electric, and the feminine energy, which is magnetic. Isn't it obvious that the union of a male and a female make love together, create babies, and create life, the energy of life? The masculine energy, which is electric, it enables us to talk, to give, to transmit. And the feminine energy, which is magnetic, enable us to receive, to listen. And sexually, uh, it is the male who give and the female who receive. Uh. There are many coincidences like that, but there, there's no such thing as coincidence. Uh like there is no such thing as accidents. Because here, in the physical dimension, for something to manifest, it has to exist in the energy first. You have no choice. So there is no such thing as accidents. So why do you take insurance? <laughs> So today, 
it is possible that you will feel going through your body electric energy and magnetic energy. The electric energy does like tingles, uh, shivers, electric shocks, or sometimes muscle jolts. It's possible that your body shakes by, by itself and you have no control. And the feminine energy, which is magnetic, it does like waves. It's possible that you feel warm or cold, or sometimes both at the same time, which is weird, but it's possible. And it can also bring you into other states of consciousness, uh, because that's how the brain works, uh, with different uh, waves, like uh, alpha, beta, delta waves. How come it is so important that we learn what is love? Because we are creators, and the energy that we use to create is love. So you see why it is so important that we learn what is love. So the guides say, now is the time to explain how come the source of energy is infinite and how it is working. You've probably seen the yin and yang symbol. That symbol explains how the source of energy is working. So you have a white part, which is the yin part, which is the masculine part, which is white. And you have a black part, which is the yang part, uh, and it is the feminine energy. I said that the masculine energy is electric light. Does it make sense that it is the white part? And inside the white part, you have a little black dot, which is the little yang. And inside the, the black part, there's a little white dot, which is a little yin. What does it show? It shows that the masculine and the feminine, they work together. Uh, they are interlaced. They work together. That with a little bit of magnetic, we can create a lot of electricity. That technology exists already. And we use that with uh, electro hydroelectricity. Uh, they are turbines, little bit of magnetics, and it produces a lot of electricity. And the big black part with the little white dot, it is with a little bit of electricity, we can make a lot of magnetic, and that technology exists too. Uh, electromagnets. They can lift a car with that. So, the complete sign, which is round, uh, it makes it's, it shows that it's always spinning. It shows that with a little bit of electricity, we can make a lot of magnetics, and with a, a little bit of magnetics, we can make a lot of electricity. And so you see that it is infinite. There is no loss. It's the opposite. It's making more. Isn't it obvious? That technology exists 
since a long time, but our government does not want us to have it because it would free us from them. The human body works with these two energies. Uh, to be able to contract or flex a muscle, you need electric. And when you have a thought, there's light coming up in the synapse of your brain, which is also electric. And there's also magnetics. Every time your heart beat, it produces magnetics. And how did the heart beat at the first place? Do you know that? It is the soul who sends an electric <coughs> signal. It is the soul who makes your heart beat. So don't be afraid that your heart will stop. It's your soul controlling it. And so that's why as soon as the soul is detached from the human body, that the heart stops. The heart cannot restart if the soul does not come back. Go ahead. Well, being a mom and having kids, and usually the heartbeat starts at six weeks, is that when the soul enters into our womb and starts the baby's heart? It's a good question, and it's related to what I'm saying now. And so usually I ask people to wait until the end for questions, because we will do a question session, but this uh, I must take now. The question is about when does the soul enters the body? Uh, because she's saying that at six weeks, the heart starts to pump in the little uh, baby there. The soul spin around the parents a long time before conception. So you see that it is planned a long time in advance. It, it's not by chance, first of all. Second of all, the soul is attached to the baby as soon as there is conception. Only one spermatozoid can enter the ovula. How does the ovula block the other spermatozoid from coming in? It's again the soul, who sent an electric discharge of 10,000 volts and cook instantly the ovula. It is apparently one of the greatest uh, orgasms for the soul. And so it is attached there. And it's only when the, the mom gave birth that the experience of separation starts. And it makes sense too, huh? because that's when we, we cut, we separate the baby from the mom. It is the first experience that we live when we arrive here. And it takes some time before the veil is completely installed. And so when we are young, we can still have some uh, remembrance of the past. <laughs>